The sponsor of this video is myself. Check out Orange Academy for videos on history from the ancient Greeks to World War II and on science, hand-drawn videos on anything from radiation to music and anxiety. The link is in the description below. Hello guys, this is Doron's Movies and today I'll be talking about the Warlocks and who is the most powerful one, explaining how they work, what film magic is and then covering the notable ones and giving my thoughts on who is the strongest. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Warlocks are one of the most unique classes in the game. Until recently, I considered them to be the strongest out of all of the classes, and in some regards I still do, but with the current lore developments and Undead and the Void and just how the Burning Legion was so easily defeated, it is very hard to rank them. Nonetheless, the Warlocks are still some of the most powerful casters in the game. Generally, looking at the lore side and not really the in-game mechanics, spellcasters are almost always stronger than the weapon wielding classes that focus on melee. The obvious reason is that these classes just don't really have that much to offer aside from their own body and mind, while spellcasters can usually call upon powers and sources that are beyond anything a mortal can even imagine, let alone conjure with his own body. This is exactly why those that utilize the chaotic energies of the universe are amongst the most powerful, but at the same time, they pay the biggest price. In regards to the Warlocks, they are literally the definition of this and as they focus on Fel, they also utilize other forms of magic. Fel energy is kinda interesting as it is very distinct when compared to almost any other source out there. It was created as a result of a clash between the light and the void, becoming an incredibly unstable energy. While you have the arcane as the language of order, the titans, you have fell as the language of disorder, the demons, essentially the opposites. The thing about it is that it commonly requires sacrifice, destroying something to create a spell 10 times more destructive than the sacrifice. This is why warlocks utilized and carry those soul shards you might have seen to be able to summon demons and to create the more robust and mighty spells. So to get something, you gotta give something, which is usually the case with all forms of magic but in regards to Fel it is a bit different because here you're giving a life and destroying an entire soul just to cast a spell instead of in case of mages where you would just draw upon a ley line or a magic source. Because of this, Fel magic is throughout history being banned and looked down upon as it is very hard to practice this safely as was the case with the arcane and the school of Dalaran that lasted for hundreds and thousands of years without too many incidents. Just the nature of demonic magic is corrupting and being a practitioner of it is a daily struggle against your sanity. Warlocks do exist today and those allied with us are very much like the demon hunters utilizing fell and this very dangerous magic to fight the burning legion and the now result in the future threats. Now as magic doesn't have an affiliation it can be used to fight anything even the beings most native to it such as the demons so you can have a warlock utilizing demon magic to fight demons. The thing about them though is that we never really had that many prominent characters as is the case with other classes and the mages for example where you have Khadgar, Jaina, Ashara, Antonidas etc. Big reason for that is because when warlocks get too powerful losing their mind is quite common and if not their mind it is their morals and they decide to just go for power instead of what they were originally fighting and sacrificing for. The best example of this being Keltas Sunstrider. Now of course I'm aware Keltas wasn't officially a warlock by the definition, but as a mage that began practicing fell and later worked with Kil'jaeden himself, he got as close to it as possible as the line is already very thin between a mage and a warlock. Now without a doubt, the strongest warlock out there was Kil'jaeden, if we discount Sargeras because we don't really know what he was, and he himself created many other warlocks and Kil'jaeden was just on a whole different level. However, who is the the strongest mortal warlock throughout history that is much closer to us, the mortals. 
The first obvious choice would be Gul'dan, as he brought the orcs into Azeroth and was extremely influential. Still, I don't know if I would say he is the strongest, as Gul'dan was more of a manipulator, not exactly a powerhouse that would be able to destroy everything around him. He schemed behind scenes, got the orcs to work against each other and for him, got them to drink the blood of Manroth, and overall was an excellent puppet master that utilized the strength of the orcish race to empower himself. However, there is the alternate universe Gul'dan, who in my opinion is a much more powerful version. He literally blew Varian apart with a touch and was able to accomplish much more. The main reason for this was that he had the strongest Burning Legion support so far. Now, other than Gul'dan, Shogal was also a very powerful warlock, although he was anything from a mage to a necromancer, but still, as an individual, he carried significant power. Now, if we consider Kiltas as a warlock, because in my opinion, by the time we killed him, he really was as close to a warlock as you can get, Kiltas is also one of the candidates for the strongest one out there. Now, we also have Nerzul, who was barely a warlock, but he is considered by some, and Metal Felstorm, although in my opinion, not really contenders for the strongest warlock in the entire universe. Ultimately, I believe Alternate Universe Gul'dan was the most powerful warlock out there. The reason for this is because he was empowered by the strongest warlock in the entire universe, Kill Jaden, and was essentially his puppet. So, I wouldn't really say he is strongest by himself, it was really Kill Jaden that was giving him all the power, and at the point of the Legion invasion, he was channeling significant power into Gul'dan. For the most recent invasion, the Legion decided to go for more of a raw power approach instead of the manipulation plan as they did in the past and failed, so they gave Gul'dan a lot more power than they did in the past. Therefore, this new Gul'dan was able to do so much more and be a lot more powerful as an individual, not just a figure and a guy behind the scenes. Still, the strength of a warlock is decided on how much power he can draw and Gul'dan was literally drinking from the source while most other warlocks are able to just get a few drops here and there. Nonetheless, in my opinion, that was the peak power level of a warlock. Thank you for watching, check out what happened to the Scout Crusade by clicking on the screen and also check out the second channel for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.